Hello, today I'm going to show you how to paint buildings. And I found this lovely little waterside location with an early 18th century customs house and bank. So I'm making a weak blue for the sky because the buildings are white and I want to bring them forward. So I've got turquoise and French ultramarine together there. And then on the other side, just to give some variety of light coming across, I'm just going to add a little bit of Naples yellow just to give a change in the sky. Now the next thing to put in are anything dark because the buildings are white and it gives a contrast and then you can make all the other colours fit in. It's got weatherboarding going up to the roof. A little bit more blue. All the colours have to match not clash. Then here there's a little bit of a cut out for the porch of the post office and bank. Moving across to the other side of the gap there's a slate roof and I've just mixed a little bit French ultramarine and yellow ochre with some Payne's grey and I'm just going around the shape of it. Just pop that in. On this scale I'm not actually sort of putting in every individual tile, just suggesting the buildings and then the view leads you through to the lovely harbour scene behind. Uh, whilst these two areas are drying I can do the chimneys and the first thing to do with the chimney is to do the edges. But put the, the shape in first before you do anything else. And then the darker one I'll use burnt umber and a little bit of the blue that I used earlier just to make a darker brown. I will put a list of the paints used in the description together with details of the area. There's a lovely circular walk around the harbour. Now the first one I did is nearly dry so what I can do is go in with the yellow ochre and just do side to side strokes and the yellow will push the other colours back and just give an indication of bricks. I can't do anything for that one for a moment. Then I've got a very nice lead porch. So I'm using Payne's Grey and again a little bit of blue, French ultramarine. And I'm going to put the big porch in. This is early 18th century, so I would assume as it's a listed building, it's lead. The lead will be catching the light and it will have the odd dimple and crease. So not adding any more paint, but moving the paint that's already there. Uh, again, where they've rolled the lead over the top, slight curve. So that doesn't look straight, it does look curved. The customs house has also got a slate window sill, which I'm going to put in. Anything that defines a building, you want to put it in first. And it's a little bit lighter this side because it's catching the light. So I'm just going to pull some of the paint back off again. Try and get a proper corner. So the windows are sash windows, so they're slightly offset. So I'm going to use Naples yellow. And this neck curtain there as well. And just go round my pencil lines and then I can rub them out afterwards. So I've got two windows there and then because it's a sash window, the ones underneath are slightly to the left. They're slightly offset. So without getting too technical or complicated, you can make them look like a sash window just by moving the square a little. And then further over to the left, the neck curtain seems to stop and it's darker. So I've just mixed a little bit of blue and grey to the mix. Now because there's neck curtain, there's a slight pattern. So what I'm going to do is use a brush, just pull some of the paint off. And then some of the dark paint put on top of the cream, just to show there's a pattern there. Now the porch is quite dark, so I'm going to use the Naples yellow because I've got that in other places, which will give harmony. And from the right, go down around the phone box 
and in, working my way to the left. Now using the dark paint that I've used for the slate, drop it in from the top and the left only. A little bit darker. Don't put it anywhere else, just the top and the left. Use a clear brush just to lose the dividing line. Put the slate roof on here. There's just a little hint of it going down. So you see, building is developing out of shapes. Nothing more. Don't have to show any detail, just a shape. And that goes over slightly. I want to put the hillside in quite soon to get the colour tones between the hillside and the bright white building so just before I do the hillside I need to put a few things in that are going to need to dry so I'll put in the cream chimney pots and this is curved at the top so I'll just put it on for now and then I can come back to it and put more tones in but I've got room to put the hillside above and below now, before I put the hillside in I'm going to put the rocks in because it's low tide and there's lots of rocks showing on both sides and I've got the mask to put against the dark tree. So in this case, you can either use gouache, white gouache afterwards, or you can use latex to go over the mask. So I've got still got the number four brush and I'm doing up and down marks down to the tide line, which goes right down to the corner. And then over here, clean off the brush. This is so far away. I I just need to suggest it. If you're not sure whether it's level or not, if you just sweep the brush across and it, you find out whether it's up or down. Now the light, the rocks get lighter as they go up because they're not wet so often. So I'm dropping in mid-brown on top of the bottom colour. Not so over here because it's so far away. I'm just doing a dark line around the boat and then just give it a wavy edge because the trees are going to come down there, but it's in a lot of shade. And then over here, just drop in at the front a little bit of Naples yellow for highlights. And just drop it into the wet paint. And because it's yellow, send some of the pigment back again. Now, while that's drying, I'm stuck for a minute. So I'll move back here and put the steps in. Now, both houses have got steps that are just a nondescript colour. So I'm just going to clip in a rectangle and then when it's dry, I'll add cross marks to show the step and the same for the house over here. Just a rectangle, nothing more. It's just mark making. What I can do is put the C coming through the garage windows. It's quite a strong blue, but it it makes the picture. Now the rest of the water can go in around the boats when it's dried off a little. And I'm going to put the boat masts in with white gouache afterwards. Now the hillside is quite easy to do. It's woods going up from rocks and then farmland and a little farmhouse tucked away which is a punch of white which will make the back and the front match put it in very gently very wiggly it's at such a distance that you just have to suggest it the farmhouse is nearly level with the top of the chimney and it creeps around this side of the chimney which again going into the wet hedge just losing it a little and the farmhouse i'm just going to Make the area a little bit smaller and I'll pop that in shortly. So going across to the other side, there's a field that's obviously used for different purposes and it is far more yellow. Now I've got to put in trees. So I'm going back to a number four brush. It's a spring picture and the trees are just coming into leaf. Put a little bit of brown in, not the same brown as the chimney. Still want the chimney to show. Then bringing it forward, keep changing the green as you go, starting on a different part of the page to give a more random effect, bringing it down. And I've got the hillside on the left and the hillside on the right, and this one's much darker, so I'm going to use some Payne's Grey and mix in with the green. It's all in shadow. I'll just go a little line, and I don't want a hard line there, so I'm just going to pull it out. And going back to the other side adding a little bit more yellow ochre into the paint then back to adding more sap green making swirls not necessarily just left to right 
just to break up the hillside a little bit do a very good tree with a swirl I want to try and get a straight line by this white building so I'm just going to change my aspect to the brush and go down and it's very dark at the bottom there's cliffs going into shadow so I'm going to add some lemon yellow to the bottom to show where there's a change from rock and that make the white mask show nicely as well it's cliffs and shadow now I'm going up a little bit and it's not a straight line it's nooks and crannies around the tree branches and bits of cliff now I need a clean dry brush just to put some lost edges in now over here this side I've got it's nearer catching the sun it's more yellow and it goes around the porch so put the top lot of scrub in above the these little stump trees and bushes really it's not much that grows there and round the porch and the rest of the hillside coming forward is catching the sun so it's quite bright compared to the right hand side of the picture so i'll add more yellow drop it down by the chimney and it changes color towards the bottom more green so i use the sap green drop it into the wet paint and this is rocks and shrubs mixed together so i'm just using little swirls to mix them that's brought the buildings forward now the next stage is the water water is very light where it's reflecting the sky but dark at the back so what i'm going to do is put the light on first which i'm going to use a mixture of french ultramarine and turquoise and i've got boat reflections i can leave a shape for then working back just make sure the curve's all right and i can add green to this when it's dried the reflection isn't solid it's sort of broken so just add a little bit of blue around the boats and it's about the level of the point that it changes to green uh, for the windows i've got the same color french ultramarine mixed with turquoise and i've got a number four brush because it's got a good point you could use a flat brush for this and i'm just going to suggest these windows they're very old so starting with the most prominent one i'm just going to go across the top And then there's a corner piece so I need to go down both sides of that and across and then there's a middle divide and one against the water and then coming across there's a narrow piece against the house there's a balustrade to put on top the bottom's a bit lost under the balcony but i'll just put a couple of suggestions in and then there's a porch and i can just see the top of a door if you can't be sure just put the slightest mark and then moving across to this one again cross piece going down on the corner across and a middle piece and the edge and then a side piece now underneath there's some lovely brackets that are holding it on I we'll put those in in the same color for now but they will be a bit darker and they overlap each other and then there's another door down the bottom and i can actually put in a little bit of a door frame Now moving up, there's a roof window and then there's a hint of the window showing through the recessed window frames. So I'm just going to put in the tops of them and then one side of the window frame. I'm going to 
put the balustrade in around this terrace, which I, I just let the sea dry first before I did that. You get lost in some stages as to where the sides overlap. So I'm just working my way down just to give a, the pattern of it. Just give the suggestion of the terrace. Good to have something dark next to all the white buildings. Now the garage looks good because you can you can see blue through the windows. The rest of the windows are very dark, so I'm going to use some indigo. If you haven't got indigo, just use the darkest colour you've got. Pop the windows in. I'm losing some at the bottom behind other items. So that's given the suggestion of the garage, and that helps all that all helps break up all the white that's there. Now the next stage is the red foam box. First of all, put in the arch at the top of the foam box. So it goes nearly to the corner of the customs house porch. I'm just going to straighten it up a little bit. We've got straights and angles merging. So with anything like this, put the top in first that sets the character of it. I've got straight lines so I think we start round the back, just put one down and again I'm not necessarily going all the way to the bottom and then there's another side piece which is easy to put in and then another straight, it's just like a box, that's what phone box, nothing too technical. And there's a white line where it says telephone. It's always best to do this with a slightly dry brush. Then you can sort it out. And again, right to the corner and back to the area that says telephone. And then we've got the door. So more red. And again on the other side of the frame. Well, it's best to go in gradually with anything that's man-made because it is straight where the things in nature are wobbly. So there's more lines going down, but I'll put the sideways in ones in first. And this top one I can make it, I'm just going to add a little bit more paint. I don't want it too wet. I've got more metal work because we've got the door. And the window matches the other side. So now I've got to put in two more vertical lines and on the far side there's not that much. I've got a sign in the way which is a nuisance but I can go round it. The lines just match and um, because we're looking at it at an oblique angle, a slight angle, that the lines going across even though they look like they're going up slightly, they are actually at a right angle with the upright here. I've got drain pipes. They're quite useful when you're painting because if you're not sure if anything's straight or, or wobbly, you can always check because on these old buildings, that's the off, often the only thing that is straight. But this white on white, so what I want to do is to use homemade grey and the shadow is behind the guttering. So I'm just going to go down from the top And that will help it stand out. And again, underneath. The same underneath the window sills. I can just put a little bit of homemade grey. And the doorway, which is stone, very rough stone, is all sorts of colours. So I'm just going to drop some homemade grey in with a wavy edge to show the stone. And then drop in Naples yellow and blue to highlight the contours. So what I'm going to do is just put a little line round. And then just plain water. And the paint will find its way to the middle. 
and the same with the others that look more like the stones than the mishap. And I'll put some more nooks and crannies on the rest of the building in a moment. What I can do for some of the ones further down is just drop some yellow in the middle instead, just to give variety. So Naples yellow again. And there's a slight hint of dark around a window frame. So I use some Payne's grey and then some brown at the bottom. You've just got to look for anything that separates it from the rest of the building when you're painting a white building. And a slightly cream windowsill. Now there is a slight shadow inside the window frame, but not as much as the doorway. So I'll just go in with the Naples yellow on top of the very weak grey. Just drop that in. Take out the strong bit at the top. I don't quite want that. It's easy to adjust. Now I need to break up the white surface. So I'm going to use very, very weak French ultramarine. And just drop some in at random. And then round the corner here, it's in shade. It's not getting the light from the sun from the river. So I'm just going to use a little bit of purple from the homemade grey. Just following the area around. And then it gets yellow towards the bottom. A little bit of water just to lose any strong bits. Further down, there is a very, very slight indication of another window, but it's hardly visible from the angle I'm at. But it's just underneath the porch. So I'm just going to put a little line in. And then there's another stone windowsill, which I can put in with the Naples yellow again. There's a couple of pot plants out here, so I'll put the planter in, in a mixture of brown and Naples yellow, stone planter. And that again will help the white building show up. It's got a pattern on it, so I'll just get some of the brown and just suggest a pattern. Now, for good contrast, we've got a red post office trolley and that's a different red entirely. So I'm just mixing Venetian red with some of the other reds. I'll put a list of colours in the description and put that in. It's a different colour on top to the sides. I'll put one colour in to start with and then come back to it. Doing it very lightly because some of the pot plant's covering it. It's got red handles that are much brighter. So I'll put the red handles in, which is actually like a frame that goes round it. And they go actually over the steps. And the other one goes to the middle. And then down, and the frame goes round it. So now it's a question of the boats. It's just white gouache. So this is by Windsor and Newton, but most manufacturers do sell it. Um, you need to keep it away from your other paints. Just put it in a corner because it will alter the colours of them. I'm not going to use a rigger. I'm going to use a number one thin brush. and just follow my pencil line down. So what I do is dab it on the paint tray before I put it on the paper. So it's just a suggestion I want to give. So I'm going to go back to the first one again. Just try and make it a little bit darker where it goes over the rocks. And again here where it goes over the rocks, just it doesn't show much on the water, but it's the rocks that give you the suggestion. Sometimes things do need two coats. 
And some of the boats have got rigging and others haven't. So we'll leave well alone for a moment and go for the green water behind them. I've got very, very dark green. I'm just going to do a few side to side strokes. Nothing solid. It gets much darker towards the back. They're coming forward. It's lighter, but it's still green. So I'll come forward to the middle of these two boats. Going very gently. And then halfway here, because it, then it changes to a reflection of a much darker colour in some places and lighter in another. So I'll add some more blue for the darker area, which comes all the way into where the phone box is. Just side to side strokes, just suggesting it. And there's a reflection of the yacht as well to put in. And then at the join of the porch and the framework of the building is a different colour because the hillside is more yellow. And then we've got reflection in the water of the rocks. So I can just add that to a line of brown. Now I've got a boat with red on, which really helps the colour scheme. So it's got a red cover to keep the wind off the sailors. So I'll pop that in. And it's got a sail at the front that's furled red that starts from the top of the mast. I'm just gently putting it down on top of the colours that are already there. And this one's all white, but it's got a, a dark blue line. Anything that makes a change is good because it breaks up the white. I've put a very weak line in. I'm now going to go over it much stronger. And it also seems to have a dark water line. I can pop that in. And it's got some nice bright blue areas that have, there's a slightly different colour underneath and a big fender reflected. And in the very back, there's some mooring boys that are yellow and that helps break up the green. So I've got chrome yellow on the brush. I'm just going to make little marks. Now I need to put some more detail around this white boat. So you just look for shapes. Just small details just help shape it. And the red boat, or the boat with the red sails, has got red underneath as well. So I can put that in. And this one's, the white one's got a, a white sail that's all furled up. So what I'm going to do for ease is put that on with white gouache. It's also got a sail furled up at the front here, which I can put in. I've just rubbed out the pencil lines on the white building to reveal the colours I put in, which softens it and again attracts you through to the middle of the picture. The next thing I haven't showed you is a bay window on the other building. So I'm going to start with a number four brush and there's a light on inside. So I'm going to put the light on in first just to give some bounce to the picture. And I'm mixing Indian yellow and chrome yellow together. And I'm just going to do a splodge in the middle of the window there. Now, even though it's a half circle window, it's sticking out a long way. It's obviously very old. I'm going to still keep all the uprights. It's the angles of everything else that makes it look round. So the uprights go in. And there's three visible from this side. And then the angles go slightly up. And what makes it look round is the bottom of it that is a half circle. So I've got some Payne's grey or any dark colour and make the half circle windowsill and again on the very top. If you want to soften something just pop your finger on it or use a tissue and then to emphasise that it is a half circle the underneath where there's a doorway 
that's quite dark so I'm just going to mix up some of the other darks I've used and that goes halfway so it's not the windows that's making it look round it's the things that are around it now not all the windows are dark because there's reflected light coming through so I need a warm colour so I'm going to use a little bit of turquoise to show that there's light coming through and just go in and just put a little bit of a hint on that they're there well, it is very old slightly wobbly and it's actually leaning back a little bit from the building next door which probably is what you'd expect for its age and again we've got lots of drain drain pipes and they are the only straight bit on the building and there's a little bit of a I don't know whether it's a felt roof or what it is up here stick that in now for the windows we've got quite dark window sills on the seaward building but you can't really see much in them because it is an oblique angle so i'm just going to put some black in or paint gray and then we've got lovely balustrades which are a work of art so i'm going to use again very dark color a bit of paint gray a bit of indico and put that in it's only the suggestion because it's very intricate and it's quite high and distance away so just put in a suggestion of it and then some nooks and crannies so just take the brush for a walk and you've got a suggestion of the balustrade and at the bottom there's a little light which I think would be fun to put in down here. Just suggest the window sills. We're going up, we've got several roofs joining, so I'm going to use a bigger brush and paint grey. And that's very dark down the side of the roof light so I'm going to put in some just neat paint grey which again helps show the white and then there's the building next door which is joining onto it that's a very shallow roof at this side so just clean off the brush and take some of the paint back and that goes to a white wall now that white wall needs some color on it as it's in shade so i'll put some blue on now for the next stage we've got to do the middle of the foam box so to start with we need the telephone area which seems to be level with the top step so we put that in and then there's a shelf And shadow at the top and the shadow is matched on the outside there and then some cream for the rest just to bounce it back and some cream for the floor we can't see the floor but it will be slightly lighter with all the light coming through the windows for the post office trolley i've used a little bit of rose madder on top and then a zillion crimson and paint gray on the end and then a dull red in the middle so you can see it's in shadow but see its shape and form the plants which make the picture and break up the white and just going up from the stone pot and mixing some darker green just to give a little bit of contrast shadow another plant with a dark bottom change the green slightly it's a good way of just breaking up the building a 
and then we've got a windowsill with slate on again we'll just mix up some bluey grey go around the windowsill and then mix up some stronger colour and just put some squares in and then the other way drop a little bit of blue in the slate isn't just one color it's lots of colors and now the windowsill is dark underneath I'll just drop that down to infinity and now if i want to i can put the railings in so i'll show you how to do railings but first of all there's a little bit of the garage that needs finishing off there's a join in the wood And it seems to have a nondescript coloured floor, so you can pop that in. So the railings, number one brush. You could use a rigger if you've got one, but if you haven't, I'll show you how to do it. The number one brush. So we want a very dark colour. So I'm going to use Payne's Grey and a little bit of Indigo. And you just need to make a start so the first thing is to make sure that you're comfortable and then i'll start with a phone box because i've got a line there that i can follow well, i hope you've enjoyed watching this video of these lovely early 18th century buildings and that you will enjoy sketching when you're out and about near a harbour soon